I'm the warm-up act for today um, to set the scene, to frame the debate. What the heck is content marketing anyway? We know content marketing is big. If you talk to European professional marketers, they say it's their number one priority right now, content marketing. It's come out of nowhere to be the number one priority. And you ask those same marketers, what are they going to spend more on next year? The answer is content marketing. But what exactly is it? Um, to help us tell the story, we're going to be talking, I'm going to talk to you about chuff charts. That will become clear in a minute. And supermodels. Um, because I think understanding supermodels and chuff charts is going to be the key to, for you guys to understand what content marketing is all about. Start with supermodels. And when you say Brazil and Germany, Often today, probably the World Cup comes to mind. But Giselle Bunchen is a Brazilian-German top model, um, mostly highly paid uh, fashion model in the world. And she has something to do with content marketing and what it is and why it's, so, uh, why it's on the increase. And that is because Giselle a couple of months ago, was on the front cover of a new publication, a new magazine published by Netaporte. Netaporte is the big online fashion site, uh, e-commerce site. And Netaporte decided to publish their own magazine called Porte. And, well, that's interesting, but there are lots of fashion magazines out there. What's interesting about the Netaporte magazine, which is available not only on the iPad, but also in Dead Tree Media, is that it's entirely shoppable. Everything in there you can click through, you can scan, and you can shop everything um, in that magazine. It is innovation in publishing. It's publishing innovation, shoppable magazines. Let's flip to uh, the other side of the world, to another model. This is a virtual model, Hatsune Miku. Uh, has anybody heard of Hatsune Miku here? Hands up if you've, okay, drawing a blank. Well, Hatsune Miku is a virtual pop star and fashion model in, uh, in, uh, in, in Japan. She's a virtual avatar. Uh, but incredibly popular, incredibly popular. And people actually go to concerts, live concerts, to see this avatar, this virtual holographic pop star, um, and see, see Hatsune sing. And she's on tour at the moment. Lady Gaga is it. She's actually um, on tour with Lady Gaga. And there's her tour dates for 2014. But what's interesting about Hatsune Miku and content marketing is some more publishing innovation. And this publishing innovation comes from Domino's, the pizza company. They're not a publisher. But what, but what, uh, what Domino's recently did, they published one of Hatsune Miku's concerts. And the only way that you could see the concert was to scan your pizza box. And you would see on your mobile, you would see this published concert of Hatsune Miku. It was so popular that they ran out of Domino's pizza boxes in Japan. This is publishing innovation for marketing that shifts products. It's a great idea. Let's turn to the third of our, our models. Actually, an actress has also done some modeling, Naomi Watts from, from the UK. Now, what's Naomi Watts got to do with content marketing? Well, like many celebrities, like many models, uh, along many fashion shoots, she is a big fan of wearable tech. These, uh, not such as the Nike Fuel Band. And she's done a number of appearances, media appearances, sporting her, her, uh, her wearable tech, her fitness tracker, the Nike Fuel Band. What's that got to do with content marketing? Well, if you think about the Nike Fuel Band and other types of wearable tech. What are they? They are self-publishing products. They publish personal data online um, just for you so you can track, you can monitor your activity. Again, this is innovation in publishing. This is publishing innovation that helps shift stock, that helps sell. And the final fashion model, Candice uh, Schwanpo, um, South African. Um, 
what she got to do, um, so famous for working with Juicy Couture and, um, and Victoria's Secret, what does she have to do with, uh, with, with, with content marketing? Well, again, it's about publishing technology, making publishing sexy. She appeared in a YouTube video, which was a shoppable video. Go on, watch the video, click on anything you see, and you're taken directly to the, the Juicy Couture e-commerce site. It is publishing innovation. And what publishing has done, it's gone through a second revolution. It's no longer about dead tree media. It's no longer about print. Technology has made publishing sexy again. And that's the reason why content marketing, the main reason for me why content marketing has taken off, because we've got so many innovation opportunities. Some of you might be uh, aware of The Edge. Uh, it's, a, it's a website where big brains get together, philosophers, scientists, uh, psychologists, and run by John, John Brockman. And every few years, he publishes a book uh, where people say, where they talk about the future. And he brought some of the smartest people on the planet together and said, what is the most important innovation in the history of human civilization? What was interesting, asking 20, 30 people, there were two camps. One camp said, well, of course, it's the printing press. The printing press is the single most important innovation in human civilization because it allowed the knowledge economy to take off. It allowed the, the, uh, the enlightenment to happen. And of course, it's a German innovation. Um, and was, the other camp said, well, actually, no, it's the internet. The internet is as big and as disruptive as the printing press was. It is changing fundamentally how human civilization evolves. But if you think about it, the printing press and the internet are pretty much the same thing. The internet is a digital printing press. They're both doing the same things. So why is content marketing hip today? Why is it sexy today? It's because we're part of something big. As marketers, sometimes we look down at, you know, we're the bum fluff of business. We're not really important. We're the guys that do the brochures. But when we're doing content marketing, using publishing channels as opposed to advertising channels to achieve our marketing, our marketing objectives, when we're doing that, we're participating in something that is big bigger than us, bigger than our jobs. We're part of the future of human civilization, which is publishing. The internet is a digital publishing platform. And through content marketing, you guys are players in the future. And so we're talking about publishing, digital publishing. I'm not talking about simply putting, to, uh, putting analog press online. I'm talking about shoppable publications, self-publishing products, virtual event publishing, like the, uh, Nike, uh, like, um, the Hatsune Miku with Domino's, location-aware publishing, video and game publishing, personalized publishing, real-time publishing, second-screen publishing. Publishing is sexy, and it's going through a fantastic era of innovation. And not only as technology made content marketing sexy, it's also made it scalable. We now live in a world where everybody has a purse, pretty much has a personal screen that they can get the content they want from the internet. We are disintermediating advertisers, consumers, users of internet technology are disintermediating intermediating advertisers. And they can access their content through Google, through search. And so if the content is good enough, your content is good enough, you can reach more people than you can reach through traditional advertising. You can re reach the majority of your, back in the, when television was at its prime back in the 20th century, you could reach the most of your target market, the, uh, whatever it was, through, through about six TV spots. Now you'd need over 200 because audiences are so fragmented. Advertising is tough, but publishing, if you have great content, then you can reach big audiences, deep and wide. And I'm talking not about 
When some people say content marketing, they, talk, they think about social media, they think about Facebook, Twitter posts. Um, and I, it's a bigger, content marketing is a bigger idea than that. We're not talking about clogging up user feeds with junk. You know, how many people here just love it when brands fill up their own personal news, news feeds with, with promotional stuff? Nobody loves it. But the best we've got in some content marketing today on social media platforms is stuff, this is crazy. I mean, this is, this is the best bit of Facebook marketing I've seen in a long while. Um, this is Aldi in Ireland, and Aldi actually are one of the best digital publishers, just digital marketers that are out there in Germany right now. But this is just an example of how not to do content marketing. So we have a holiday destination on our mind that, to lead up to a 150,000 fan giveaway. With that, that in mind, um, can you guess what this holiday destination is? It's tough, isn't it? This is what they think the intelligence of their users are. And this is the best there is out in, in Facebook marketing, content marketing on Facebook. It's just, it's bigger than that. We've got exciting things to be doing. Just don't. How about Twitter? Here are my five favorite posts from Twitter for that sum up the state of content marketing in social media today. And see which of these these Twitter posts you think are best. And these are from brands, the actual brand accounts, um, using Twitter to promote themselves. See which you think is best. Is, is that it? Is that what we're here for, content marketing? No, we're, there's more to content marketing than this. And these are actual, real, official tweets put out by brands. It's like, this is disposable, this is junk marketing, this is landfill marketing, this isn't content marketing. And we can go beyond that, and we can go beyond this idea of native advertising, which is effectively just deceptive advertising. It's tricking people into thinking what they're seeing is not an ad by taking the native format of, of, uh, of, uh, of, of the editorial. So you've got great sponsored content. The Taliban is a vibrant and thriving political movement. You know, members of the world's fastest growing Islamic fundamentalist organization. Sponsored content, it's great. There's more to content marketing than native advertising. And there's more to content marketing, then the first steps, although taking the first steps is smart. One of the most, one of the content marketers I most admire in Germany is Dr. Ertke, that is basically a publishing company that just happens to make consumer goods. They have an entire, uh, Dr. Ertke Verlag, has, it's a publishing corporation, publishing really popular books that people are prepared to pay for. You want to know if your content marketing is good? Ask yourself, are people are prepared to pay for it? That's what, that's what defines good content marketing. But we can go beyond just repurposing analog content and, um, and putting it online in digital format, so putting it in, in app format or, or, or online. We can do innovation. We can do content marketing innovation. So I love this Red Bull, uh, this, this, this Red Bull piece of content marketing. You can turn on your TV. You can watch a ski show. You can, on the second screen, thanks to Red Bull, you can actually see a first-person perspective of the, of, the, uh, of, the, of the people, of the skiers going down the slope. That's really valuable. That's great content. It's not social media. It's not junk. It's not film marketing. It has value. It's about innovation. Content marketing is about innovation. So where do you start? Well, you hear a lot today from lots of people about the power of mobile, power of storytelling. Everybody will have their own take on it. I'm a psychologist, so I'm going to give you just a five minute of psychological insight into how a psychologist would tackle the challenge you have to use publishing channels as opposed to advertising channels to achieve your marketing objectives. And just going to draw on a big body of research that 
those of you who have done communication research will know, it's called media effects research, which looks at how media content influences audiences. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a paradigm that goes back a number of, uh, number of years um, with a huge amount of research. And, but why am I going to... Everything up to now has been easy, so why am I complicating this with you now when I'm going to talk to you about psychology? Well, we have a problem. Actually, whilst it's, you're doing content marketing, you're participating in something that is really exciting. It's sexy, it's scalable, and it's part of the future of human civilization. We matter as marketers. We're doing something great. But we have a problem. Technology not only has made content, content and publishing, created a new revolution in publishing, it's also created masses of content absolutely masses of content. Half of human content produced is actually less than two years old. Imagine, less than two years old. Now, technology is great as well because we can consume more content than ever before with our, with, 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 with our tablets, our post-PC devices. But there's a difference between what we can, the maximum we can consume as content and what is being produced. There is content overload. So the biggest challenge you guys here in the hall today have is that how do we deal with this content overload that's out there? And if you, that's why you need the people who are going to be talking today who will give you some insight into how to tackle this problem. So but if you talk to a psychologist, he'll say, well, from, look at the media effects research. And the big framework, the big theory that comes out relevant to content marketing is something called the uses and gratifications perspective or framework. What does that mean in plain language? It simply means that people use media. They use it to look for solutions, to look to help them inform what they're going to do, what they're going to buy, what they're going to do next, what they're going to say. They, they're users of it. They want media to help them. They're looking for solutions. Gratifications, something that gratifies, something that pleasing. They're also looking for distraction. They're looking to be entertained. So quite a bit of research looking at how the very fact that humans can project into the future means that it's actually being alive, being humans, quite anxiogen. We actually feel, we actually feel anxious about it because we realize when we project into the future that one day we're not going to be here anymore. We're going to be dead. We're just going to be worm food. We're going to be eaten, nibble, 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 munch, 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 and you're going to be dead. It's over. That's a scary thought. And we like to take our mind off it by getting, being inter entertained, distra distraction. So what that means for content marketers is that you've got to strat two basic strategies. Are you going to help people? Are you going to entertain them? Sometimes, if you're smart, maybe you can do both. But what does it mean to actually help people? Well, as a psychologist, I'm getting back into doing a bit of clinical psychology. I used to just do experimental stuff, experimenting on people. Now I'm actually trying to help people a little bit. And when you meet a patient for the first time, or every time they come in, you say, like a normal human is, how are you today? How are you doing? And people say, oh, I'm okay, I'm fine, I'm great. And it's meaningless because you know you've got to say you're fine even when you think life really sucks. You say, yeah, I'm okay, we've all done it. So I've given up on that. And I use something I call the chuff chart. And what is a chuff chart? To be chuffed means to be happy. If you're chuffed in English, it means you're happy. You could call this a happiness chart, but I like alliterations and CH goes well, two CHs. So a chuff chart. And a chuff chart is basically how you are feeling this morning, if I ask you how you are, rather than say, yeah, I'm okay, I ask you instead on a scale of zero to 10. Zero, suicidal, I just want to be dead, and 10, orgasmic, life couldn't be any better. And what you get, when people get this, they start saying, yeah, well, I'm about an eight today, I'm a seven, I'm a six. You say, how's your chuff chart? Seven. And it's a great way to get real insight out of Patients, humans, colleagues, just ask them what their chuff chart is. And what's that to do with content marketing? Well, if we're in the business of creating solutions, uses and gratifications, providing solutions, what we need to do is chart our consumers' journeys and identify their pain points, points where their chuff chart is low. 
And that's where the content sweet spot is. That's where you need to target, where you can solve people's problems, when they are, their chuff chart is low. So you need to know where your consumers, when their chuff chart is at two, one, three. Anything less than orgasmic is an opportunity. But look for the pain points. So which is what um, American Express has done with one of the best examples of content marketing, I think, online today on its open forum. It publishes a blog, which is also a forum, which is a self-help group for entrepreneurs who have problems. They don't know what to do when you set out as an entrepreneur and, or a startup. It's complicated out there, and there's masses of experience out there. And so what the Open Forum does, it brings people together so they can help and offer advice to each other. It works at people's pain points. You go to Open Forum to find solutions to problems that you have. Now, this is a kind of entrepreneur thing, and most of us here are consumer marketers. But if you look at Birchbox, um, you have the equivalent in Germany, Glossybox. Um, I think Birchbox may even be launching now in, in Germany, which is, those of you who know it, it's a, a sample subscription model. So you pay subscription every month and you receive a box of samples. But what Birchbox is, is the magazine industry turned on its head. You know, you used to get magazines when you were a teen and you used to have a free gift or even today, sellotaped or stickered on the front. Birchbox is the other thing, other way around. It's not a magazine with a free sample. It's free samples that come with a magazine. You get a box full of samples and you get a supporting magazine. And people pay for this, this new generation magazine. Now, what's this got to do with solutions? Well, it's because when there are so many new products out there, you don't know what to try. It's like, am I going to really waste sort of 20, 30 euros on a new beauty product and I don't know whether it's going to be any good? That's the pain point in the consumer journey. It is the trial. It's the risk involved with trial. And what Birchbox does is solves that problem. It looks at the pain point in the consumer journey around beauty products and male grooming products and it says, okay, how can we use publishing to solve that problem? At Syzygy, we do the same thing. We target the pain points in the, our client's journey, not just consumers, but client's journey. Content marketing is complicated. So we're not too big fans of infographics, but we love art graphics. We create art graphics at Syzygy that help our clients understand trends. So hidden in here, and there's a key underneath it, the art graphic, are 20 different content marketing trends taken from big events um, in 2013. And we're touching the pain point of our clients because content marketing, there's so much marketing junk out there. There's so much marketing hype and spin. We're trying to be clear, but do it in an entertaining and engaging way, teaming up with, 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 with artists. But, but I want to leave you with the second point. The first point, so it's all about solutions. And we're in the business of solving our clients, customers, and consumers' problems through great content. Because if we solve their problems through content, they will come. Technology allows us to do that through, through, innovation, through publishing innovation. The second one is entertain me. It's, like, it's about creating smiles. And there's a Nobel Prize winner, Daniel Kahneman. Some of you may have read this book, one of the best, uh, best selling uh, business books um, of all time now. This guy's won a, a Nobel Prize. And he has something to say about digital marketing and what you do in marketers. And he basically says, we've got it all wrong. When we do digital marketing, we have a very rational mindset that it's about looking at product features, product benefits, giving consumers reasons to buy our product, say, hey, buy us, we're great, we're better than brand B, we should buy us. And he calls this system two thinking, this very rational, logical way of thinking. It says all the evidence in psychology says that actually the brain doesn't operate like that. It works on intuitive, fast thinking, system one thinking, which is emotional. 
And so what digital marketers should be doing is to try and create a positive emotional response. Rather than trying to persuade people, you should be trying to make people smile. We should be trying to seduce people, not persuade people. Make people smile. And just by the power of association, something psychologists call spreading activation, they will like your brand more. In digital marketing, it's more about the heart than the head. And so we should be trying to make people smile. And a telecommunications uh, a mobile operator in the UK has taken this to heart because research has shown looking at over 2,000, uh, looking at two, over 2,000 um, uh, ad responses, the ones, the ads that were most effective, content that was most effective, was content that uh, was content that created an emotional response that didn't persuade. And so this telecommunications company, this mobile company, produced an ad about, a mobile, about mobile and why you should buy it. And try and count how many arguments you see about why you should subscribe to three in this short bit of content. We built this city. We built this city on rock and roll. Say you don't know me. Recognize my face Say you don't care Goes To that kind of place So, how many arguments for what to, to, to subscribe to three? None. But looking at people's intention to buy, this is one of the most effective pieces of content because it makes people smile. You can help solve problems, or you can help people, or you can entertain people, make them smile. There's no right way or wrong way. Both work. We are in the business of creating smiles. So, what the heck is content marketing? Well, in a nutshell, if I had to say what it is, it's digital publishing innovation. Digital publishing innovation for smiles and solutions. That's what we're here to do today. And we're going to be hearing some, some great speakers who hopefully will be telling you how to create smiles or how to create solutions using digital innovation. It's a fantastic time to be part of content marketing. We're participating in something really big. So I'm looking forward to the day, and I hope you are too. Thank you very much. <laughs>